Welcome to Show Studio, it's Paris Fashion Week and we're going to be talking about the Chanel show which is always a show that people really look forward to, I think mainly just for like the theatre because it's such a kind of like big moment, it's so themed, it's so um, over the top for want of a better phrase. Um, but also I think there's something quite wonderful about what Chanel do, I think it's very of the now in terms of fashion, you know, it throws up lots of conversations about social media, about you know, the purpose of the fashion show, um, it's interesting time for Chanel relating to those things because obviously as much as they do the most Instagrammable shows they're quite conservative in their approach to the web so really interesting time for them. I've got a fab set of panellists with me and um, with lots of digital expertise which is good to help me kind of dive in and talk about what Carl Lagerfeld's doing at the House of Chanel but before we kick off I'll just let you guys introduce yourselves starting with you Charlie. So my name is Charlie Boyd and I'm the acting watches and jewellery editor at Tatler. I'm Rosanna Falconer and I'm business director at Matthew Williamson. And I'm Paula Reed. I'm creative consultant at My Teresa and also at Max Mara. And I'm Dominic Jones. I'm a jewellery designer and consultant. I'm going to go to you first, Dom, because you put a picture up on Instagram of you and Carl and you were giving him a ring. What is that? Give us some info. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, he commissioned me to make him some rings a couple it's of years amazing. ago. Amazing. Yeah. So cool. Really cool. I didn't know he, about he, that. he liked the ones that I made, but he wanted them in like fine jewellery. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. with diamonds and stuff. So nice. I didn't know about that. When you put it up, I was like, that's very cool. And <laughs> um, the first thing I want to talk about is um, is branding, and I think it, what's really interesting is like when it's show season, you see so many different flat runway images, you see so many different collections, and it's really easy to kind of lose a sense of who's doing what. And I see a lot of houses when you're like, I actually don't know what you stand for, I don't know what your DNA is. And I think what's really interesting to look at Chanel is it's so the tone is so there, and I hate mm. using these kind of fashion cliches of like the codes of the house and what have you but there really is that with Chanel it's so you kind of get it immediately and there's such a sense of it could only happen at Chanel and I'm interested what is it about what they do that makes the branding so strong is it just the aesthetics like the garments like the tweed and the chains and what have you or is it more to do with how they put the show together and how they communicate big questions Rosanna or Paula <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I'll I'll start short and sweet it's because it's all encompassing it's a Chanel world and I know that um that that touches every element of the brand and it's also something they take into consideration with digital that they want to make sure that that's perfectly communicated and mm. i know that's why they've held back for so long and that's why they see the physical space is so important as you can see in the shows it's yeah it is a spectacle in the way that um i think a lot of modern shows have lost that sense of the spectacle and the sense mm. of theatre and um, it, like you say it is the ultimate Instagram moment and they seem to just achieve that every season. This mm. season with Chanel Airlines, hashtag. <laughs> My favourite place to be, a dream yeah. place to be but also the, the, when you talk about the codes I mean that's their language isn't it and the language mm. is incredibly simple mm. and almost everybody can recognise it from the double C's to the you know black toed slingback mule to mm. the tweed to the pearls to the camellia i mean there are some things you see them i remember first when i came to london seeing that there are um i think it's in the in the city of westminster, westminster. there are <laughs> there are lampers with double oh, seats yeah, on it oh yeah you think it's chanel it's chanel is it it is it is well it's when it's he was the duke of westminster yeah, yeah. 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 they had a relationship yeah. they were courting and he put seas on all lampers for her that why don't i know that yes <laughs> i know is that actually true actually we just did a piece on it in tatler Oh my god! Because <laughs> I've seen those, but I've never actually thought that that. Oh, was yeah, like, no, that looks like Chanel. Yeah, yeah. 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 She, it had, does. she had a, she had a relationship with the Duke yeah. of Westminster. But I think it's always yeah. funny though. It's not as if it's sort of you know you've given a box and it's got a piece of jewelry yeah. in it or yeah. you know dress or whatever. You know, it's a romantic light uh, lamppost with some fish yeah. on it. What do you say? And and somebody gives you a lamppost. Well, instead of carving their initials into a tree, yeah, they yeah. kind of he put them on lampposts. How fabulous! I love that. <laughs> so it's everywhere. That's so cool. Mm. But so, so that language, I mean, when you talk about communicating, pr particularly on social media, and social media is a distillation of communication, mm. the clearer you can be and the more you can kind of strip your brand back to absolute you know, basic <laughs> principles, the mm. more you're likely to get your message, message across and people are going to remember yeah. it, right? Mm. Is that the problem with kind of a lot of the young labels that we see is it's so hard to get those kind of code so quickly and I think oh listen Chanel didn't get them quickly no I mean exactly. no yeah, they, they have yeah. them it's a house with an enormous mm. heritage but yeah. it took generations to develop those and they're mm. smart to use them to communicate with mm. but but this is the 
not the struggle, the challenge, the dream, the you know, the journey that all brands are on is to, to try and develop mm. language that's as clear as that. Mm. And I wonder whether it's actually the ability to keep revisiting that almost, I mean, there's a lot of them, but equally, it is sort of contained. If you go back to the apartment, to Chanel's apartment, they're all in that room and they keep revisiting the same thing over and over again. There might be sort of 20 different motifs, but it, it keeps it really tight. Yeah. Even though they can keep reimagining it in different ways, there's, there's definitely almost like a sort of encyclopedia or sort of, you know, it's, it's a, like a Bible of their own language and, and method of getting her message across that I think mm. that's what they keep revisiting. And do you think part of the strength is the kind of combination of things that are kind of very readable and very mass and quite pop with things that feel a little bit more cerebral? You know, we all, you all think of the TV adverts, you think of the perfumes, you think of the lipsticks, and I think mm. there's something where Chanel is so mass, it's such a strong brand, but they always do these things that also feel slightly artistic at the same time. And is it the combination of those two things that make it really successful? I think we've seen more of that recently in the last few years where we've had such obvious themes and also such obvious sort of modern almost fast-paced consumer themes, things like airlines and supermarkets and mm. I think that's a much more obvious link to modern day, you know, everyday life. Yeah. Um, and I think that's been interesting for me as well, seeing that level of luxury and fashion and, you know, uber art going into what is effectively a really boring, normally, mm. experience and making it fantastical. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I think, part of the magic and what you were saying, Rosanna, about the theatre is that you know supermarkets aren't fun mm. but when you looked at that you know the merchandise and the cocoa pops and it was mm. you know it, it was really really a funny interpretation of normal day life mm. but i think playfulness has always been part yeah. of the Completely, brand you know if you yeah. think about you know how she developed things you know from the duke of westminster's wardrobe for mm. example and the jersey undergarments of men and you know mm. it was the first woman to get a suntan there's something very kind of free and easy about her spirit and and you know, Karl Lagerfeld is a pop culture junkie. So yeah. the kind of playfulness is very much on brand for them. Mm. It's not not that surprising. Mm. A lot of people find it bad taste, though. Do we not agree with that? You know, the supermarket show got so much flack for being kind of you know. What is wrong with these people? I'm today's really coincided <laughs> with the Air France debacle. Oh, with us. So we've got <laughs> Chanel Airlines, and then the Air France oh, employees yeah. ripping garments off the head of HR well, there because of the. Way that oh, I, I can think of a few HR it's people. A little bit like, ironic. <laughs> 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 I, was quite, I, I yeah. was quite screaming at my telly last night. <laughs> I don't think it'll last forever. <laughs> I think those sort of those flippant themes. I think will probably they not, not yes. last. Off the yeah. because, I mean, They're not going to last I that much longer. Him, I, think. I don't know because we've had the supermarket, the brasserie, and now the airport. And I don't know if you'd be able to roll out another next yeah. season. I did, didn't you kind of know and guess that there was going to be a setting for today? Because mm. this is, that's slightly dangerous, isn't it? Because it's when, it's when the inspirations turn into themes that isn't chic, that isn't, yeah. that isn't design. Yeah. Um, and and it has been going, it. it's kind of been yeah. rolling in that way for, for quite a few seasons Maybe he'll now. go back to a white room next season and really freak mm. everybody out. But that's out. what Rick yeah. Owens did, that's exactly what Rick Owens mm. did. He was so known for doing the spectacles and obviously he's gone back to that for this season. And then, you know, completely stripped back and was like, I didn't like being thought of as like the ringmaster of fashion. Mm. He was like, I felt like I wasn't designing because I was so worried about, you know, the show being this kind of crazed yeah. Thing. And then he pulled it right back and did the really kind of plain white space clothes. But he's always in. done, I mean, I, and, and that's part because he's the, the, you know, the consummate communicator. But mm. it's not just these runway shows in the Grand Palais. If you think about the Zaha Hadid amazing, mm. you know, building that he did or the, you know, the kind of pop-up building that mm. he did in Central Park or the airplane that he did in, in Tokyo or, mm. you know, even in a much smaller venue when he did that incredible for the couture, that incredible whole um, kind of mise-en-scene with paper art mm. and that amazing Japanese, mm. Japanese paper engineer did, um, sorry if I've miscredited somebody, um, with this amazing paper flowers mm. which then for the entire season ran through the windows as well mm. as an incredible mm. kind of red thread. But, you know, it's, a, it's never been, Chanel has never been particularly understated. Mm. I mean, even mm. going back to those fashion shows when Inez de la Fressange was on the runway, mm. they were ne there was always a, you know, a pile, juggernaut of models mm. and mm. Inez at the end doing the splits or, you know, cartwheels mm. or whatever. It was never the sedate affair that, mm. you know, Saint Laurent was or yeah. Armani, for example. And the, there's a talking of the experiential side of things, their exhibition that they're opening next week at the Saatchi, mm. it's going to have a room dedicated so you can experience 
4D, the um, Coco Mum, no, the Coco Chanel Number no. 5 scent. Mm. So I imagine there's a lot of smells and making of and all the rest of it, but mm. they take that right through to an exhibition that they do for mm. the public so they can experience the brand at, in every aspect. Mm. One thing, I'm jumping ahead of topic, but I want to talk about kind of online in relation to all we're talking about, because we're talking about communication, we're talking about themes, we're talking about kind of pop culture, but I just think there's such this kind of strange disparity between how they operate in some ways and how they operate with the web, because it's like this show is like the pinnacle of fashion theatre, but it's not live streamed. Mm. And, you know, they mm. are so good at creating kind of social buzz, but then they don't sell online. And I, I think there is a real... Disparity. Yeah, yeah, complete disparity. I don't. I don't think it makes sense. I wish I could be like. Oh, I think there's some big strategy, but I don't <laughs> think there is. I just don't think they fully embrace the end goal of doing all these things. And it's like, you know, what's the point of getting loads of people to tweet about it if there's no way to kind of interact with Chanel online? But does so that I matter? Do, I mean, the the Chanel woman is a very, very, very specific woman. Like, mm. very, very high end. Not many people can afford Chanel. Mm. And those that can afford it. It's the it. biggest selling perfume in it the is, airport. It is, which is so why... We're all Chanel women, really. Completely, but it, does that matter in terms of the... I think, it, I, think I mean, they're launching at, this, at the moment, late 2016, with e-commerce, and they haven't mm. said how much it's going to be a toe in the mm. water or fully, like, let's dive on it. they did yeah. one thing. They did a jewellery capsule with, with Nettle 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 Nettle, 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 yeah. Which apparently was hugely successful. Yeah, yeah. but then, interestingly, with that, they designed... They did like this kind of like digital pop-up type thing, yeah. you know, where they like a chance for Netaport to kind of flex their muscles with mm. kind of technological innovation, and they just made it look like a shop online, yeah. which I thought was quite funny almost because mm. it was like Chanel being like, we really don't mm. want to be here; we'd rather this was a physical space. So they made the online space look yeah. as much like the physical as possible. But yeah, as Rosanna said, they are kind of moving. They've said that they're it's it's something they're going to do properly. Mm. But I mean, their argument used to be in 2013, the CEO said, we won't, we won't launch online because we want our customers to be able to come in store and experience the customer service that they would expect from Chanel. But then uh, this year, talking to WWD in March, he mm. conceded that actually he needs to respond to consumers' mm. lifestyles and that some consumers do want that um, in-store experience and some lead very, lead very fast paced lives and just want to be able to pick things up quickly. And mm. I can vouch mm. for that amongst our customers, the amount that have such a fast paced life that sometimes even same day delivery doesn't seem yeah. like enough for them. Yeah. But people yeah. buy everything online now. Mm. I mean, yeah. you know, when I interviewed Tom Ford from my Teresa, he said he even bought his Bentley online. So, you know, there is no, there's no, limit. There's no yeah. barrier mm. to what people are prepared to buy online. And, I, and I'm not surprised that they're sl slow, mm. or comparatively yeah. slow, mm. to, because when you have something that that's pre that is as precious as that to protect, you're not going to kind of jump mm. in exactly. immediately. Mm. So they, they'll feel their way along until they feel comfortable with it. But I think there's, certainly a critical mass of kind of movement right now online and a lot mm. of these brands are really realizing that they can't ignore it especially with China slowing down as much as it has so that yeah. huge kind of growth area is suddenly kind of plateaued mm. and online development seems to be the smart mm. way to go. Mm. Also the experiential offering for online shopping I mean it, you say three years ago to well, almost three years ago that's vastly improved yeah. so I think yeah. it possibly just could be a case of waiting for the right moment until the right mm. experience mm. is able to be offered. I think it depends also what you see as you know customer service because mm. I think mm. to them they probably presume that customers do want to you know speak to a physical person yeah. have someone bring them a garment maybe be given a like glass of champagne or a cup of tea or what have mm. you but I think to a lot of different shoppers customer service actually they, they don't want that they don't engage with no. that at all they customer be less service alone. to do with speed and yeah. convenience yeah. Yeah. And, and reliability exactly. yeah. 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 Absolutely. absolutely and i define customer service uh, for example when we had a store that closed at 6 p.m and customers couldn't call the store anymore whereas mm. for online we're soon to launch live chat but we've also got I mean, our emails get responded to pretty much just outside. It, it, there we do sleep, mm. but <laughs> uh, outside sleeping hours, you're going to get a response within one to two hours. You sleep and with your phone, Rosanna. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing that's that's what what people people my phone that's what people appreciate, and that's what people have come yeah, to yeah, expect. Yeah. And I think that the store, if anything, the lack of the 24-hour schedule yeah. is where bricks and mortar is going to fall slightly mm. behind. Mm. And I think customer service, meet, that's the crucial thing, it means something different to everybody. Mm. So I think for me it's more about the flexibility of offering a different kind of customer service mm. depending on your customer. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's interesting. That's really luxurious But to going me. back to what Don was saying, do you think there's an element where the availability of Chanel will put some people mm. off? Do you think so? Do you I think mean, like, I'm just thinking, I, I can't imagine how it will work online mm. like, will it everything sell out in two seconds because there's waiting Absolutely. lists for these things you can't no. you can't walk into a chanel shop uh, on an average day and get the bag that you exactly want no, you have yeah. to you have to place your name down and wait for it most mm. of the time unless you are one of their VIP yeah. customers mm. and you're like how will that work online like how will that how will that yeah like That's equate right. will mm. everyone in the world be like counting down the seconds until it reloads, like Glastonbury tickets, going, please, mama, please, can I get it? Yeah. Like, how really how will that work? Like that, but I do think that's a good point as part of the thing of buying Chanel is the experience of trying to get to Chanel. Yes. And, and, and also, like, I mean, what you were saying, I, I, I can't imagine that will fully work with Chanel because, like, sh like most of the people that I know that's, that not necessarily can even afford, like, mm. to spend the money they do on the clothes, they get the buzz by going into the shop and walking yeah. out with the bag. But yeah. I'm talking do you, kind do of... Do you get that buzz from clicking the no, button? No, but the kind of woman who lives at yeah, one Hyde sure. Park and is yeah, in London yeah, 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 one week sure. a year yeah. and the rest of the time. For and sure. really, that's mm. their customer. It's not yeah, your okay. average English person. And actually, the experience no, on, on Mind Teresa is that, that, that the price is no barrier to yeah. Um, yeah. online shopping. And actually, you know, it, you know, Dresses, evening dresses, but you know, fully embroidered from Valentino, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand pounds would come yeah. like that. So mm. there is a shopper, a global shopper, who's absolutely yeah. in that market. Just wants and to your stuff. point about being on the with you know Glastonbury ticket, uh, yeah. probably more in our price range, mm. but absolutely <laughs> they'll be there. Mm. And I can absolutely imagine mm. in the you know the yeah. halls of Chanel right yeah. now, especially there are a lot of men that going. Sounds so unchic, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> sounds so yeah. not what it's about. But no. that's what digital always comes down to: logistics. Yeah. yeah. An inventory and yeah. but you know, I mean, there, there is that. Yeah, but that's what that, there is that level of customer. I went to um, Masterpiece um, yeah. last year, um, which was the first time I'd ever mm. gone to that. Beautiful. Was the most it's extraordinary amazing. experience, mm. and there were people there who were doing some serious yeah. shopping. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I thought, imagine having the. A, you know the ability and, and the means to shop this yeah. like I mm. shop John Lewis I don't know yeah. and it was yeah. absolutely <laughs> extraordinary and those people yeah. do exist and I d we just happen to be at the nail varnish end mm -hmm. of the Chanel spectrum <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> if people spend enough money online do you, mm. you know, either at my toes or at Matthew Williamson, is there an element of where you would send someone to take it to them, for example, rather than... Yeah, yeah, definitely for us, because we're the same. Our top selling items are either the three and a half thousand pound fully embroidered pieces or the kind of beachwear that's 295 a little dress. Yeah. And um, if a woman, and really we try we try not to say that there's a price barrier on it, but that if a woman does want an appointment at her house to view more of the collection, we mm. would, of course, hand deliver, take special pieces. Because then it's this strange thing where online shopping, people talk about it like it's kind of like the lowest end of fashion retail and like the last thing that people want to do. But in a way, if you look full cycle, it's almost replicating the couture experience yeah. where you get mm. something brought yeah. to you in your own home. Absolutely. So there's that weird thing where actually, go, I wonder if it'll get to a point where going to a store almost feels like the least glamorous way to do it whereas you buying have to actually make an effort and yeah because you have to physically yeah. move yeah. whereas you know if you drop like 20 grand online that <coughs> someone's going to come and yeah. try yeah. it on and tell you if it looks good and, and, and mm. uh, you know they're uh, i can't think of the phrase lo and behold the poor brand that somebody does spend 20 grand and they don't think to approach mm. that customer and start a relationship yeah one of our biggest whenever there's a new customer even if she has only spent 295 pounds on a on a beach dress we always make sure we follow up personally and see how they discovered us and and i think online gives you access to this data that often in store you might not get but people in store often don't like giving away that data and that level of personal data so you don't always get to form that relationship to follow up with afterwards mm. Mm. yeah and the, the vip shopper from my teresa for example who's got the backing of customer services and they're all speaking five languages 24 mm. hours seven days yeah. a week um he's probably got more air miles than anybody that i know so he's mm. frequently on a plane shipping mm. merchandise or taking merchandise mm. Mm. um to people so that they can try it on in their homes or meeting them they're in their hotel room in new york or london or wh wherever so mm it actually becomes a really rarefied mm. thing, something that actually we hadn't fully developed, for example, at Harvey Nichols when I was there. So mm. it's becoming even more exclusive, mm. I think, the opportunities mm. online. Mm. 
And do you think we'll get to a point where there's different tiers of online? Because you, know, you see it quite a lot at the moment, like Netaport is a really good example of this, where it's kind of like there's so much stuff. Like you could go, you could spend £40 or you could spend £40,000. And are mm -hmm. we going to get to a point where just as stores kind of are, like e-retailers split more carefully between how much you have spent and how much you do spend and rather than it just being this kind of one for all type arrangement. Yeah. Are we going to get like, you know, almost like couture online retailers that work in a lot more of a higher end way? I think you've got to be careful with how you personalise your site and your marketing because mm -hmm. some consumers, particularly those over the age of 55, often actually don't like Younger consumer. I was looking at a report from Drapers on it today. Younger consumers love receiving an email because they bought a red dress and they have a selection of other dresses they might like. I think other older consumers can feel a little bit like they're being watched mm -hmm. uh, by the nanny state. Yeah. And, and also and those algorithms yeah. are very, very heavy-handed and rarely. It's and they can be unreliable. It rarely do they ever get when you a selection that you really like. Yeah. And then it like stalks you across mm. the web. You oh, know that that's feeling. Good. Yeah. That's free to no, advertise. No, I think that's great. I think that you when you look at something and then you're like, you know, just on the Daily Mail looking at the sidebar, and then it's like appears, and you're like, ah, I hate that. Freaks me out. It always makes me not want to buy it because I think it's like cursed. So I'm like, <laughs> online deja vu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. coming it's at really, you again. Really and again. Weird. But I, I still, that. I still think the most effective form of personalization is with a person and with, yeah. you know, you get your data from the site, but then somebody actually need just needs to analyze it and think about it in context. In a human way. In a human mm -hmm. way, and that's what. Who's uh, getting e-commerce really it. right at the moment then? Uh, Burberry, Michael Kors. Mm. Um, as have a great um, scar uh, kind of scar uh, area of the site devoted to their scarves. Mm. Are you talking about brands, though? Or are you talking yeah, about? Well, I guess both. Brand. I was interested to hear what you said about brands, but I guess multi-brand as yeah. well. Because the brands, the, I mean, I have to say the bar is set pretty low. Would yeah. you it, not it, agree? I, I completely agree. agree. I mean, there are yeah. a couple who are out there ahead of everybody else, and Burberry certainly one of them. But Annie every March, March I Burberry. think, is also doing a blimmin' yeah. amazing yeah, job. Actually, really her, really her really really site looks fantastic. But, and Michael Kors is, is super good, and I'm really excited to see what's happening with Matthew Williams. Oh, fine. Oh. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Relaunching 2016. <laughs> but um, there's not a lot out there that's super interesting, but the opportunity for brands, for luxury brands, is so exciting. Yeah. And I think they really, there seems to be... Do you think be people are too conservative, though? And not uh, I don't scared think, to kind of... Well, I don't think they've really appreciated what they've got at their fingertips and, and I don't blame them for one second because a lot of these people, they, they start off as their designers and they're possibly retailers, mm. but now they have to be magazine people, they have mm. to be yeah. content managers, yeah. they yeah. have to be, Branding you know, expert. I mean, they have to be everything and mm. that's not within their remit necessarily. Mm. I totally get it if they are you know, have been a little bit like <laughs> rabbits in headlights, mm. but more and more you're seeing a lot of really interesting creative thinking, mm. I think. And who's getting it right on a kind of multi-brand perspective? My Teresa and Netta Porte. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Mm. It's like, it is kind of obvious in a way, mm. yeah. because, you know, you see where people are going, you see where the mags are compl like constantly referencing, you know, it's, it's, it just becomes a sort of fail-safe. Mm. But equally, I would say there's a lot of much of a muchness yeah. You know, there, there isn't really anything between those guys that really stands out. They're mm. all doing it to just about the same level. Mm. And um, I think so, the, the danger for some brands, they try so hard to replicate the luxury and the, uh, the story of the brand online yeah. that they make it too techy and then it can't be rendered properly on every mm. browser and on mm. kind of computers from 1999 owned by the lady in Oxfordshire who yeah. therefore can't get on the site. So it's finding a good balance. A good balance, yeah. that's yeah. interesting. Doing things that aren't too techy. Yeah. yeah, because actually, again, in this report I was reading, the thing that customers really want online isn't content, although we find it can be a great after sales tool, mm. but it's actually just slick checkout ease of customer yeah, service, absolutely. ease of finding yeah. returns basics. information. Just yeah. get the basics yeah. really, really slick. Yeah. Do you think there's part of the problem is there's too much focus on kind of innovations like, you know, Headline did you, grabbing, did you actually yeah. try it on or look inside the bag? Do you think people yeah. actually care about that or they just want to be able to buy it really fast? Um, in the survey, 
of, of 5,000 people, only 10% said they were, would, were interested in an innovative way of providing sizing information. Mm. Mm. Everybody just said they wanted yeah. simple and easy mm. sizing. I mean, they, they kind of don't know what they want until they get it, though. That's, that's really yeah. it. That but but it but and they, I don't think anyone's cracked that sizing tool thing. No, mm. and it's really tricky, because that's, and that's also a tricky one for the, for the brands and for the retailers to, to crack, because if you can sort out the sizing issue, then it means that your returns will go down because mm. people won't be buying three sizes, yeah. you know, two yeah. around the one that they think they are. So mm. um, that would be really useful. But I, I totally agree. It's the, it's the mechanics of mm. delivery and customer service and mm. sending and returning and, you know, making sure that the credit card goes through seamlessly and that it's mm. all really fast. And that, that that can also happen on your mobile phone now because yeah, most of exactly. those transactions happen on the mobile. But all but of that seems so much more important than, I, I mean, this sounds bad coming from somebody who is in the editorial industry and who produces this sort of <laughs> content, but I just wonder whether actually are people really reading all of that editorial content yeah. that is created to beautifully complement all of the stock? You know, it's such a lovely idea and it? it's seamless and it's, it's very, it's a very artistic and creative lovely thing to do, but I just wonder actually is it making any difference in terms of sales? Mm. Well, probably not. No. But well, no, and we could measure that at MyTerese mm. as well. And it was a heartbreaking thing to sit in those yeah. meetings and see exactly how little. Yeah, because it's a lot of um, effort. Am I going to regret this? I can't remember. <laughs> but um, how little <laughs> um, actual conversion there were yeah. there was off editorial, and and you know we'd often kind of be a little bit despondent coming out, but. Mm you cannot measure so easily the power of the branding. Yeah, yeah that's true. And that is absolutely vital because you're not going to go to something that looks like, you know, I don't know, I can't think what it's a Groupon mm. to buy, you know, your Marc like Jacobs coat, are you? Yeah. No, you it's want, like the fashion show for a experience. brand. Mm -hmm. In a way, the editorial content for a, a retailer, it's like, you know, it gets buzz going and it creates yeah. this kind yeah. of excitement. And, and it's, it's some, more yeah. soft selling, yeah. that personalization mm. thing, once um, the team have cracked down into the data in a human way mm. it's much easier to send them some articles about the craftsmanship behind the dress than mm. sending them like the product page and this is the price and mm. aren't you going to buy it mm. I mean yeah mm. so I think it's a, a, a softly softly approach which mm. works yeah that's interesting so how do we think Chanel would do well to kind of do their e-commerce is there anything that we think they could do really excitingly that other brands I, couldn't I think they should harness their YouTube which yeah. is they've got twice the following of their nearest competitor which is Dior mm. twice the double the numbers um, of subscribers and what they're so great at is storytelling mm. and that's why their YouTube is so popular it's also got great makeup tutorials from mm. Lisa Eldridge who's mm. obviously huge on YouTube but the storytelling is just beautiful on yeah. YouTube mm. that's interesting and and their their films films the yeah shows, yeah so. they're the storytelling of their films yeah. which are admittedly only kind of one to two minutes but yeah. you know Giselle's surfing oh, last October yeah, actually, well, even weird. Giselle last October, the yeah. number five one. That was oh, there was a long version and yeah. short. Oh, I only short short saw the short one. No, well, there was a yeah. long version, which was a, which was quite an intriguing story as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And actually, that's kind of great that there was a long because whatever you've got time for, then you yeah. you can adapt. You tune yeah. in yeah. for. Mm. What would you like to see them do? But online. Yeah. Would you like to see them just not do it? Uh, <laughs> not no, no, not, 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 that, that, not that I wouldn't. Not that I wouldn't like them to do it. I, I wouldn't like to say. Like I don't know. I don't know whether I necessarily have any input on that question. What What do you think is good about Chanel, though? What do you think they should harness as like their? Well, they they're consistent in the things that they should be consistent at. The the product is always so beautiful and recognisable. When you see a woman wearing Chanel, they always look gorgeous. It's very mm. rare that you see some wearing Chanel and they look bad mm. um, I always think that their accessories is fun and like <laughs> exciting and I think that their ambassadors and the people they choose to represent the brand are always on point and they're just they're just an all-round consistently mm. good mm. brand mm. that doesn't doesn't often disappoint talk to me about the ambassadors because I think they use that in a really interesting way because mm. they've kind of avoided getting saddled with the kind of um, celebrity thing mm. that's going on so much in fashion when actually they, they use celebrities incredibly prolifically but mm. they've you know, there's so much discussion around like and they always Bauman seem to, they always seem to be the first to to uh find someone to find someone yeah, yeah. They, and they really do bring yeah. a lot of people to the to the table mm. it's um, almost like the chanel family isn't it really yeah, yeah. It is. because yeah. vanessa paradis and now her daughter mm. and yeah. there's a kind of loyalty yeah there. Well, 
continuity, I, mm. I guess. And I guess once you've been taken on board that family, you don't really need to leave to another no. house. Yeah, exactly. Do you? No, exactly. Like you've reached the pinnacle. Yeah. Although, mind you, Inez did, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. Which oh, then yeah. she came and back. It's all generations yeah. as well, when you look at the little, what's the little boy called? Oh, um. Yes. Hans? Is it Hans? No, it's, it's not Hans. Hans. It's, um, uh, can you Google the, what the little Chanel... Mm. Oh. The the oh, Carl's the godson, isn't he? Mm. Oh, is he a He's he Carl's godson. Yeah. Yeah. Hudson. 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 There we go. Little Hudson. You know, how old is he? Eight-ish? And he's so, already, yeah. you know, he's already part of the group. It's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. Should, <laughs> should we have a look at what Carl's done for this season? One of the other things I wanted to talk about was kind of the demands on the designer, because I think mm. you know, the Chanel shoes are absolutely huge and so themed that you get the sense of, like, they must just pour their heart and soul into them. And it's interesting just to consider that as we look at them. And he has a special crew. I mean, there is a an amazing lady who you know, steers that entire project and mm. she literally spends her entire working day mm. and year and night probably, you know, kind of mm. evolving these ideas with Carl. So, mm. I mean, to, to that's a very, that bar is set incredibly high. It would be unfair for a young designer to kind of <laughs> even <laughs> try and think they could aspire yeah. to that. Mm. The budgets are insane. Yeah. So he did like <coughs> a boarding gate number five, mm. which is quite funny. Um, and the departure screens went to Shanghai, New York, Moscow, Rome. So it's quite interesting how he was kind of like name checking these different areas, different countries. There were waiting room seats, male flight attendants. <laughs> so it was very much kind of. And they all went through security to get in. Yeah. Did they take the shoes yeah. off? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that would have <laughs> been really good. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's, a bit, it's a bit dismal, that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is actually. Yeah. Take your shoes off, take your belt off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look five. Is that is that um, <coughs> their take on the tracksuit bottom right there? The in-flight tracksuit bottom well, that's so it, ubiquitous at every airport. Yeah. Well, I can't work out if they're doing like flight attendant uniform, which number six looks like, mm, or whether yeah. they're doing travel wear. So what you maybe it's kind of a bit of a hybrid of all of those. Yeah. The makeup kind of I think is quite scary like I really like it but it is a bit yeah. nuts do you really like it I do like it I like it when anyone does a strong makeup look because okay. I get so bored of seeing like a kind of like fresh face kind of slightly nothing looking yeah. 15 year old like bags <laughs> under the eyes and puffy eyes with, with I think it's like an yeah. airport sleep mask isn't it oh, that's yeah. what I took it as I thought it was a sleep mask yeah, yeah. and you know you always get like oh, yeah there's blue one and they had them under the visors as well, so yeah. the visor sunglasses, didn't they? But you know, it's kind of interesting, he can, he can hammer out a theme, and you know, we'll all be talking about this airport theme, mm. but you look through that, there are any number already of classic Chanel suits. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's true. For you know, all of their you know, customers. The so. silhouette is quite different as well to what he's been doing recently. I think there's less of a, it's less girlish, and it's mm. less useful, and it's less, um, it's much more womanly, even just the shape of those skirts. It's, mm. it's much well, less kind of, 10. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've seen a lot where it's kind of quite empire line or a little bit, yeah, it's just, it's, I think he's doing, he is moving that forward a little bit. Which is kind of why it's almost a shame that it is so theme. Yeah. Like everyone keeps on using this word theme and I was thinking about it on the way here. It's like, it's kind of a shame because it's, because it's <laughs> almost devaluing the, the You missed the design. Collection. Yeah, you're right. And, and, I'm sorry, but yeah, like for true. me personally, like I don't want, I want fantasy from Chanel. I want aspirational, yeah. e everyone, a lot of people go through the airport. I know that, that travel is a huge part of their, yeah. their customers' lives and it's mm. an important thing to be tackling, <coughs> but it's like, it kind of, yeah, it's almost distracting. Well, it's sad because when you go on Instagram, I noticed it particularly with this show, is people, they're not Instagramming the clothes, no, they're Instagramming not. all the stuff, yeah. the, so the yeah. little plane paraphernalia, ticket and the paraphernalia, yeah. exactly. And maybe that is the point, maybe it is a sense of, you know, because sometimes I do actually look at the collections themselves, like the real, real garments, and you're like, this isn't that different to, to what's come before, to what's come before. Mm. this isn't that themed. Yeah. And then you think, oh, is, is all of this just a clever way to tie together a collection? Yeah. Which I think mm. sometimes it perhaps is. I think that's what it's intended as. Because if, if imagine if the set wasn't there and they didn't have the kind of visors, you wouldn't look at this and go, oh, this is about airport and, and no, globalisation and travel. No, not at all. And, I, and the, it goes back to the codes of the house again. So yeah. if you're going to, I mean, this is in, very commercially astute mm. as well as being, you know, Instagram worthy. So it's, mm. you know, it's, it's 
it's absolutely made for social media, but at the same time, it's also made to sell. Mm. Mm. Um, and I guess if you, you know, it's all about presentation and about telling that story, mm. Rosanna, mm -hmm. what you were talking mm -hmm. about earlier, and I think that's what they are trying to do. I think them. it's also interesting to think of social media at the shows, and I think you know, there's such a backlash against the blurry runway picture. Yeah, there is. I think designers are really aware that if they want to do something that is going to be social media worthy or friendly the clothes aren't enough yeah it's, it's almost a static yeah it has great to photo opportunity objects that they can create and place around the place completely. that gives a good photo op. that doesn't have to be a theme yeah it could, like i agree an with inspiration you. Yeah. for a collection yeah. doesn't have to be a theme yeah yeah and like and i think and i feel like the last you've had the brasserie you've had the shop supermarket mm. you've had everything mm. for the a brasserie, long time it's yeah. been a it's been a theme <laughs> now yeah, yeah the problem like, is i think now we're expecting it and so we're expecting similar venues each mm. time, or sort of, you know, ideas each time. It's the I same, I feel the same about Dolce. Yeah. I think, you know, it was amazing the first time. Mm. Now, But even Dolce changes else. less than this. It's just like Sicily, yeah. Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least this Sicily is like itself in <laughs> Sicily. Yeah. But, and I think if you, if you kind of think also about where this is taking place, I mean, it's mm. the Grand Palais. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So there's only a couple of the, you know, the, the really big French names that get in there. Mm. Yeah. So there's Saint Laurent, there's... Dior and there's Chanel. Mm. The scale of that, yeah. I mean yeah. it was built to house airplanes <laughs> for yeah. the World Fair so it's like showing in an aircraft hangar yeah. so mm. you have to uh, or, or you get out of the Grand Palais but yeah. it's you know there, there's also really a huge honour I guess in having that. But he used to do theatre without doing yeah. theme. Yeah, yeah, that's I, true. I, I, I'm, I've been to two Chanel shows mm. and like that was they I loved them like it was nothing I've ever experienced mm. and I'm really glad that I got to go to the ones that I did because Which I don't one? know. Which ones? I got to go to the one with the, I can't remember the names. I got to go. The first one was the one that Florence played at with the shell, the shell, and the oh, yeah. one. Yeah, and yeah. I got to go to the dark crystal one with all of the. That amethyst. was my yeah. favorite. That was my favorite, yeah. and I'm so yeah. glad that that was my the one that I, I got to go that. to because it was so dramatic and it was exactly. so like it was was fantasy and it was like theater, and it was it beautiful like yeah. and it was it was everything that I would want from that experience mm. and. I don't know. I, I'm just. A, I guess I'm just a fantasist and romantic. Yeah. <coughs> romanticist. But I like, but like when he leaves room for guessing. You know what's great yeah. about that mm. kind of the crystal show is you could project your fantasies onto that, mm. and you could look at the garments and interpret them in different ways. I think this is very like served up and outlined. One, like yeah. you know, it's a, it's a one liner. It's like mm. one interpretation. This is what it is. Mm. There's no nuance or subtlety. And mm. and I kind of feel like that's. Shame. I feel like that's kind of how fashion is going in general. It's yeah. like there used to be. I feel, I used. There used to be a defined line in my mind what fashion was and what clothes were, mm. and now it just feels like more and more that, uh, that across all of the houses, it's more the perfecting of the perfect garment rather mm. than giving you a, a, a world to, and it, fantasy to live in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because this isn't that inviting. You know, those shows where they were very theatrical but they weren't so themed, they were very engaging and inviting, and you could revisit them, and they mm. felt very, um, yeah, very much about you know, you being drawn into this world, whereas this, it's not drawing you into a world, no. it's kind of offering you a scene, and it's, then it's the showing scene you ends. an idealised version of yeah. your world that you already live yeah. in. Yeah, that's interesting. Talking of Carl and his relentless schedule, yeah. truly the most relentless in the industry, I do think for the consumer, the theme helps, but I completely see your point, and I'm more on the side of the fence with you, but the theme helps because you're able to differentiate between this and Fendi and Lagerfeld itself because it yeah. has such a clear identity. That is true. Yeah. yeah. And at least then he doesn't fall into that quagmire of not being able to tell which collection is which. Mm. And obviously he would always be able to because he's yeah. superhuman. But did you think he that truly that was happening is. before this? <sighs> One thing oh, that I've found since this is happening, the thematic thing, mm -hmm. is I'm able, maybe it's because they're equally more recent but I'm able to differentiate season to season and remember the seasons more easily. Yeah, that yeah. is very true. There but you then go. that's strange because elsewhere <laughs> yeah. in fashion, that's becoming really unpopular. Like if you look at Saint Laurent, I think it's deliberate that you can't yeah, you differentiate can't, yeah. season. Mm. I think a lot of people are designing like that now where they're trying to make it significantly less like mm. seasonal. But if you're more. doing Milan or New York, London, Paris, Milan, and you're seeing, I don't know how many fashion shows, mm. I mean, at least 
I can look back, you know, every single season, and I can probably run them all. Give me a little bit of time because my memory is, I've proved my memory is rubbish. (laughs) But I can probably name all of the Chanel shows. From an industry perspective, it definitely helps. But this must be for industry because, as we said, they they don't stream. So I think you're right in in making the observation because it does feel like this is for industry. You know, as Mm. a viewer, you know, granted, we're just looking at the catwalk images. We're, you know, if you'd followed it on social media, you would have got more of a sense of the set. But it's not the most engaging, you know. We you can't tell what's can't going on really behind her, you know. So it does feel like it is for those editors. Not those there. images, but if you get, I mean, the the kind of um, mass of Instagram images will kind yeah. of give you details and make you really it. excited. I mean, I I wasn't at that show, but mm. I'm hugely excited. So, oh, what was the ticket like? Mm. And what did the guys wear? And how did they, you know, what were the audience seated? Why in? don't they stream then? Do you know? It just feels like it would be the last, like streaming. Why? Streaming is quite difficult to get it's right. It's another level of, yeah. and it, <coughs> to get really right. And I and think Burberry had fifty, ca- no more. Than, I think it's two hundred cameras that they have hooked up. And would that be around. possible in the Grand Palais? I don't yeah, even. Yeah, it's such a huge venue. It would be a nightmare. It actually, streaming. Thinking about an insane level. Yeah, it would be mm. because of the venue. I think. But at least else. to get a video out afterwards. I mean, the other show in terms of of. Um, spectacle that I really wanted to see was Rick Owens' show because yeah. everybody's yeah. been talking about how incredible that yeah, was how emotional it was and yeah. I love his shows and I you know I found something on Vogue Runway but you know they've they've cut his interview into it and then their own commentary and it's like oh for god's sake stop mm. talking yeah you know, <laughs> I just want to say but um yeah so but that's it's kind of hard for, to for find the that on stuff. demand thing their yeah. YouTube channel comes up trumps I, yeah. I would have thought by tomorrow, usually they've got the kind of three minute cut in and then by the following day they have the 20 minutes. And then they do, one thing they do really well is their, with their ambassadors, the interviews with them. And they, rather than doing kind of a big group celebrity interview of three minutes, everyone at the show, they do little individual ones. So their YouTube channel every day is getting new video content. Mm. Mm. And it's really, it's... Of the, it's really fascinating. It's mm. really well produced. What so YouTube like, channel is that? Sorry, the Chanel oh, YouTube the Chanel. channel. So you and it is, I think oh, afterwards give them their time. Just a little bit of a delay. Yeah. Because yeah. also, yeah. I think at the thing with Chanel yeah. is it's um, it's a very big brand. So on a practical level, a sign off takes a while. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's something that we often forget. But actually, the sign off yeah. process is difficult of a huge and brand like that. You know, you have to see clothes moving because that's what they're made yeah. for. Mm. And I've often reviewed shows after I've seen them. I thought, <coughs> why did I get so excited about that? Because yeah. the static mm. image is never as mm, appealing as it is when the model's moving. So, um, yeah, I think moving images was really, moving really, images yeah. was really key. Yeah. What do we think of the collection itself? I was intrigued by the looks, the ones we've just passed, they're like mm. 50, 51, because they're almost like, it goes to that where you kind of, you start imposing the theme on the collection. Like, I'm like, oh, maybe he's looking at like fad airport, seating fabric <laughs> so, and then you, you start like putting it on and you're like probably not actually i wonder at what point in the design stage they decide on the theme like does he go into the the studio in the it's atelier and go i'm going to do airport or do they tag it onto well, the that's collection how it used to, I, I don't know I've, I've heard interviews i remember watching the amanda harlick one and she talks about yeah. he gets this clar- clarion call of what of what the next collection is exactly. as he's showing the the current, as he's showing the current the one current and he works towards oh, really? it doesn't feel like he's call. doing that yeah Ooh. he gets like he gets his Light, Divine, yeah. really? and then he went it, which is the theme or the inspiration. That's the interview the on Show one. Studio, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the Show Studio. It's with with Amanda Harlick in a series called In Fashion, and she talks about which that. Which is but a really know, amazing interview. Yeah. It's yeah. really interesting watch. interview, but this feels really different to that. You don't yeah. imagine him going. <coughs> but that's. But I think that, I think when she's. I mean, that no. interview's quite a few years old yeah, now, and I think that I think maybe it his way of working has evolved. Mm. But some of that you can tie directly back to an airport. I mean, I don't know, but a a lot of it is the styling, isn't it? Because that lilac suit, I mean, number 54, I guess there's comfort in it and it's quite practical, but it Mm. doesn't directly tie back to the theme of an airport. So it's not like the the theme is a huge kosh Mm. on every single outfit, but you can be a bit more playful with the styling Mm. when you've got it as as a kind of, it's strange then because it's really veering between being very kind of quite like deliberately bad taste and mm. garish and mm. then very very chic and, mm. and almost quite lady lady it's quite it's interesting that do we like it as a collection i'm conscious we've talked a lot about what's going on around it and not the clothes which is kind of what we're saying that's the, the, set the, yeah, that's that's the, point the risk anyway, isn't, isn't it? it yeah i love the kick midi hem that's mm. coming up 
talking, that's obviously falling into the lady lady mm. yeah. uh, line of things. And I'm always wondering, oh God, what's the best season to invest in a, a Chanel suit? And oh, actually, yeah. this, yeah, it yeah, looks like there's some really good really ones in the there. Yeah. And there's some really fun pieces that you know that those ambassadors will look amazing in like, yeah. wearing yeah. around. Oh, the light up sandals. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That's really cute. 50 and the sunglasses. Yeah, I mean, the mirrored sunglasses, they're going yeah. to be hot. Yeah. I, I bought my first Chanel thing this year. I've never owned anything Chanel. I bought the little shoes. And they make me so happy. <gasps> the slow like, shoes. They're like the little, no, they're the little brogues. They're from spring, summer. And they um, have like a little strap around your ankle. And they <coughs> cut out at the side. They're like a little brogue. And they're Aww. so beautiful and they're so sweet. And I had to like back. really, really track them down. Like yeah, I didn't have them easy. anywhere. And I had to like, I was like <laughs> stalking the PR. <laughs> she was like, who are you? Go away. And I was like, oh, no, it's all about the chase. Like, and then I like made a lovely friend with the girl who it's works true. in the Chanel store on Bond Street. She really helped me. I was like, help me. <laughs> but it was the thing actually going and buying it was yeah. really delicious. Like I had yeah. the best time. Even though it was so convoluted. Yeah, because I like decided I must have them and I went on my lunch break. It was really and I was like, I must have them. So I like got in a taxi, went to Bond Street, it was really decadent. I don't have any money, so I don't know why I was doing it. <laughs> and I was like, I must have these shoes. And it was so sweet because like just a little thing, like one of the um I think I needed like an extra hole put in the strap and then mm. they had like a they were like, oh, we'll take it and do that for you now. And they made you feel like so, like it was such a beautiful kind of product. And, they, yeah. and then you, the way you pay is really, you don't go to a till or anything. They like <clears> take you into a little room and you sit and you have like a nice chat with the man and then you give yeah. him your card across the table. It's like being in a restaurant, it's amazing. Well, it's much more uh, like a fine jewelry experience. Yeah. That's the level of, because you're buying items that cost the same amount yeah. as a piece of fine jewelry. They are the best shoes ever as well. Really uncomfortable, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they look really great. <laughs> and their aftercare is amazing. Mm. You can take your 2.55 into Chanel even 20 years after and they'll fix it. And once I remember I took my certificate of authenticity in like a good girl and they said, we recognise our own product. <laughs> there is no need so for you that. Think if you take your shoes back and we're like, oh, these are getting all like beat up. Can you make them look nicer? They do that for you. I don't think they would. I want my shoes nice. It depends. Bags yeah. and shoes, it's different. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. It's different. Because yeah. also their shoes, you're probably not meant to wear like raving. No, yeah, I made that mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wore them out. You're meant to wear them on the red carpet, transported only yeah. by taxi, surely. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. These shoes haven't got me quite as excited. No. They're not quite for me, but. They're not for me either. No. It's just hard. I find it. I do find it hard looking at it because I just, I, I just find myself looking past the clothes. Mm -hmm. And I think, but maybe also we have to think it's such a big collection. Maybe they do What's sort the of check out. <laughs> <laughs> the baggage. Yeah, the baggage. The baggage. Just like, just just ignoring it, and like you, you just you think you let the outfits kind of skim over you because there's you, so much to take in. There's so yeah. much to look at. Absolutely. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I think it's something that there's the excitement at looking at the show for the first time because you want to know what's ha you know what the theme is, what yeah. the the overall ridiculousness and amazingness of the whole thing is. You know, it's a huge yeah. amount of sort of sensory. Mm. immediate appeal but then I don't think there's a problem that it then draws you are mm. always drawn back in to go oh but hang mm. on a minute and I you, should actually look at the collection properly you notice new things like now we're talking about the airport theme and whether it informs <coughs> your clothes you look at the kind of the the fact that that is strips of fabric and you think that does look like what your bag goes through you know those strips of like rubber that, you, yeah. that yeah. your bag goes through when you put it through security that looks like that like the way they yeah. all mm. flap and lift so you start imposing the theme maybe that's not correct but I kind of enjoy that. But, I, that, but that's also a, a long term signature of exactly. Carl's. He's yeah. often done yeah, that, you know, from back that. to Carl Lagerfeld and his own collections. Mm. And that play was kind of opacity and transparency. But um, the, the th he doesn't know the meaning of the word edit, mm. Carl. He doesn't know how to mm. cut things short. He is, as you were saying earlier, I think, mm. probably the most prolific designer at work. And mm. so I mm. often find, no matter what collections of his I'm looking at, there are some. And I'm grateful that it's going fast on the runway because if you dwell on it, there are always, there's always mm. an item that makes you go, what? Oh, yeah, mm. okay. And then there's something. Are they too <laughs> big, do we think? But he, um, is he, are they too big? Yeah. Mm, no, because he, that's the way he likes to work and he yeah. needs mm. to get all of that stuff out. Um. And some of it is more successful than others. But then, you know, you'll find some blogger who managed to make it look fabulous. So mm. who am I to judge? I don't know. Mm. But, um, yeah, he's unbelievably And evidently prolific. is working because yeah, he's, mm. he is so prolific and it's mm. still going strong across 
three huge brands. Mm -hmm. He's sustaining it. I want to see what the last... How many looks are there? 95. 95. Okay, speed up. <laughs> Keep going. <Jeez. laughs> and you know, no, he's great because he has the courage to try. And yeah. I think yeah. that's... You know, he's, he's not afraid to fail. And, you know, he's quite humble in that way. You know, he does put it all out there. Yeah. And Accept it. I just yeah, don't think he cares it. if people don't like it. No, probably not. I don't think at all. Yeah, I don't think he'd still be bothering to going if, yeah. it, if that was something that was a consideration. <laughs> mm. Mm. I really like those suits we just saw. They were really cute. And the denim's cool. Yeah, mm, that is cool. the denim's very cool. There's so many different ideas within each collection, though. It is kind yeah. of... Yeah, but with 95 looks, I mean, you've got to do some serious exploration, yeah. haven't you? Otherwise, it's going to get very repetitive. But I think that's part of the problem also with the themes is I, I think it almost does less of a justice to the show because it's such a big show, 95 looks. People mm. are writing their reviews so much faster now because mm. everyone wants to get them up instantly. So it's like you almost know that no one's going to actually <laughs> even bother to analyse like probably one section of yeah, it. They're just going to write about the theme. But all of the, the edit all of the big editors go and watch this the night before. Yeah. They, they all have they all have run throughs at Chanel mm. with him mm. and get shown every single piece mm. one at a time the, mm. the evening before. So they don't really need to look at the they clothes really whilst, they're, it, yeah. whilst they're at the show. No. Yeah. And also from a shoot perspective, that gives you a huge amount of flexibility and opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, from a from a fashion features perspective, there's a lot to cover, and no, you're not going to cover it all. Yeah. Um, you know, filing 20 minutes after the show, that's not going to happen. But I think if you're actually shooting main fashion, it's the best thing ever yeah, because it gives you endless opportunities for a whole season. Mm. I like the little Chanel suitcases; they're really cute. Mm. I can't believe how big it is. It is quite eighties a lot of it as well, yeah. which I'm quite into. It's quite voluminous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This section is really. But there's also some bits that feel really modern. There's quite a lot yeah. in it that I see, and I'm like, oh, that's that feels like quite young London. Yeah, some of it. Mm. yeah, definitely. Even just some of the, I think some of the nods to other cultures in terms mm. of like the, even just the layering is quite interesting, and it feels very current to what's happening, as you say, in London. Are those baseball caps backwards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. baseball caps. Yeah. There's, there's your velour trousers. I love that. I know, really it's, great. it's Juicy Couture Mark too, isn't it? <laughs> but then you're like, is it, is it like, you, I like that you never sandals. quite know what fabric it is, because mm. this has kind of come out yeah, of the... Yeah, it can't be I'm velour. sure it's not velour, God forgive me, Chanel gods. But I do me. like this, like the wide trouser <laughs> under the long skirt. Everybody needs that. Under the long skirt. I mean, that is very Cara in the, the airport, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, actually that is 89, very much so. But then you pull all those elements apart and they are perfectly sellable because mm -hmm. you know it's not just the editors who are there they have their buyers from all of their stores around the world so this is one opportunity to actually nail the kind of atmosphere or the you know the, the inspiration the of the season yeah i want to see the bride <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh. what? So wait, what's the bride wearing? I think it's Cara Delevingne in a, in a velour... <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> in a velour yeah. yeah. top. So she joined him up on the runway. Cute. I'm not sure you could really describe that look as a bridal look. No. No. But then it is a little bit out of context. Yeah. But also he, the bride's mainly the couture thing. Yeah. I just yeah. wondered if he'd give us... On the like way to the wedding. Yeah, yeah. Or on the way <laughs> on the way to the honeymoon, maybe. Yeah, on the way yeah, to maybe honeymoon. Honeymoon. Oh yeah, on yeah. the way back she's got divorced. <laughs> she's yeah, it's a little black. morbid for yeah, any wedding vibes. So we're we impressed with what we've seen, and does this in any way tie to? Oh, we were talking a lot about how they're starting the e-commerce and thinking about when this collection will drop. Does it mm. suggest that they're starting to think about designing their co collections in a way that is more suited to online retail, or is that a bit early to think about that? I think any brand that started designing around online retail is making a mistake yeah. and I don't mm. think they would be the ones to do that but they uh, uh, um, items that sell well online are vivid mm. and they've got real appeal on that mm. white page mm. um, I don't think Chanel would do a black page that's quite no, that's quite no. mm. um, and also all the detailing you know the zoom nowadays online is so powerful mm. and that would be beautifully conveyed mm. look at the kind of work, uh, lace work right there mm. so I think it would look gorgeous online and I'm thinking of the multicolors earlier mm. against the white with the 
the stripes that mm. you were saying were, were a car signature. But equally though, if we didn't know that, if I was looking at the collection completely separately, having no idea what there were online you know, e-commerce plans were, I would never even consider that the two were connected. Yeah. yeah. It just feels like another, you know, signature collection. It doesn't feel like something that's necessarily geared towards a particular platform. Mm. Yeah, but I think that's is, more sensible. Online is the ultimate customer service, mm. isn't yeah. it really? So it shouldn't really affect <coughs> no. how you design a collection. Mm. It's just the way you get it to your customer. Mm. And it could be really risky if you start altering your DNA because you want to appeal to a particular platform, you're going to then distill it down and that, yeah, that could be worrying. It's just made me really want to go on holiday because we want to go to the airport and like, fly away. <laughs> it's not like that. It's making me think of Luton Airport. After you know. your day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only if it's Chanel. Chanel yeah, airline. exactly. Yeah. Most airports aren't really that No, they're luxy. really not. Hmm. Well, should we give him a round of applause to wrap things up? He's given us lots of food for thought and things to talk about. Yay! So.